Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel with myself Isabella. Today I'm joined by my lovely friend Alex. Lovely to be We're actually here in Melbourne filming this video because I've been working on this side of the world in New Zealand and also a little bit in Melbourne but I had to stop by and see her and visit her because we never really get this opportunity. Alex was a um, professional ballerina before now she transitioned into being an amazing businesswoman in fashion, nutrition and cosmetics. So she's an amazing person to know. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so today we're going to be sharing with you some of our favourite ballet snacks that we had throughout our training and career that just helped us remain fueled throughout the day and kept us at optimal energy levels. Because everyone's a bit different, so that's why I thought it'd be nice to chat to Alex today as well. Exactly, and I think um, every break um, should be treated differently. So sometimes mm. you might have 15 minutes and other times you might have that hour and a half, but it's still not, well, not enough time to have a full meal, say, you might yeah. be here, there and everywhere. Yeah, um, I think especially in a company environment, it's often like rehearsal after rehearsal after rehearsal after rehearsal and it's very easy, especially in some companies that aren't so down the line, this is your lunch break. The lines can blur and the rehearsals can blur into each other so it's really important yeah. you fuel yourself with appropriate snacks. Also, the timing of snacks. So for example, we were discussing earlier, straight after ballet class is a really important window for glycogen. So carbohydrate, sugar in your body. And it's really important you fuel that back into your body straight away. Otherwise you can have fatigue set in soon afterwards. Mm -hmm. And there's a perfect window straight after you've done physical activity to quite a high level. It's about 20 minutes that you have to get that energy back in. For example, what would you have in that window? I would love dried fruit. In that window, I actually steer cleared away from nuts because I found it lowered my energy levels because it takes longer for mm. my body to... It's too slow digesting. Exactly right. Dried fruit was my number one thing. Yeah, I think I'd have like some apple juice or even just an actual apple. Sometimes I'd be quite tired and also very thirsty anyway, so I'd have apple juice, but sometimes I would have had even after breakfast, if I'm particularly hungry, which sometimes, you know, I've had a long day that the previous day, I'm extra hungry the next day. So I'd have like breakfast, but also half of a cereal bar just before class. I did that a lot as well, yeah. having that cereal bar. It was quite terrifying for me to actually feel hungry within ballet class. That was a terrifying feeling for me because I was like, yeah. I can't get through this class if I'm hungry. Yeah. Like I need to feel ready to go, which is actually, you know, probably you think a lot of ballerinas like want, want to feel hungry or whatever, but it's like the opposite. We yeah. are athletes, we have to be fueled. So often soon after the class, I would just finish the cereal bar because mm -hmm. it was basically oats, you know. Exactly right, that's a really good point because quite often dancers get up quite early, they're eating breakfast within that first half an hour of getting up because they need to be at the studio early to warm up. Yeah. Even that warm up, you are moving your body, you yeah, are exactly. using energy mm. and do need a little bit of a top up before you step into that class for sure. Yeah, especially because my warm up uh, as well as yours probably, mm. I used to really warm up to quite an effective degree where I was actually sweating. Mm. Um, so my whole body was warm, therefore I could stretch to a decent level, so I was like super ready to go. But like I said, breakfast was like over two and a half hours ago. So it's time to like have a snack because we'll be in that studio for a good two hours. Otherwise it's like, you know, four or five hours since you had breakfast. So you gotta be ready to go and fuel yourself. So then following on from that, obviously we'd have lunch. Yes. Uh, because snacks are only snacks. You've gotta have proper meals. Um, we won't go too much into that today. We'll focus on the snacks. Even after lunch, just before I go to the next class, I would actually have another snack. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have like raisins, nuts, something a bit more filling because often, you know, the afternoon classes would just go on and on and on. Exactly. For a long time. And even during that on and on and on rehearsal or yeah. class, I would have jelly beans in my bag. Lovely. So they might be rehearsing a bit and I wasn't in that bit. I'd be on the side eating my jelly beans just so I kept my energy levels up and ready and just like a slight energy through my body. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot, of a lot of ballet dancers are like afraid of sugar and like afraid of carbs. And it's like, you are an athlete, you need mm -hmm. those carbs. You need instant sugar, you mm -hmm. need instant energy. You know, the meals with the more slow release in carbs and the protein you know that's keeping you fueled over a long time but we often have a 4 p.m. like lag of energy and you've got another four hours of rehearsals go 
You got to down. You got to down those jelly beans. Yeah. Or jelly babies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I also used to have like on top of the snacks. I've spoken about this before. I used to have electrolytes. <gasps> yes. So like literally, and it wasn't like calorie free. It was like proper glucose s- in that. Proper glucose, <laughs> like scoop in and salt in that as well. Yeah had the exactly so that in itself as well just like when you watch Wimbledon and you see the tennis player with their water but also the the cloudy drink it's like I used to be that I used to very much treat myself like an athlete yeah I would read like athletic books and like learn how they were fueling themselves throughout the day and often read books that were associated with aesthetic sports Mm. because that's literally what ballet is at the end of the day if we were putting it very bluntly we've got to fuel ourselves but yes, we have to be lean as well. We have to have this lean, strong body, but emphasis on strong. Mm-hmm. We can't just be lean and weak, you know? Yeah. If you are under fueling and you do have those lag in energies, there's no way knowing you're improving. Like, I just want to say that right now. And even to the point where you'll get in auditions and feel slightly chaotic in your body because you haven't, mm. you know, you haven't given it what it needs. It goes into a state of anxiety. I can say personally, I definitely had auditions when I was like that in those times where, you know, there was an, an emphasis of being leaner as I grew up and stuff. I'm like, nope, she's going to be strong. It's not worth it to go down that route, honestly. Yeah, it's because literally there's no fuel there. That's not quite the word I'm looking for, but it's, it's kind of like when I first went on the Marinsky stage as a soloist, so not attached to Marinsky, but in the school doing a soloist role. I was so thin because I was told to be super thin. Like I was told to be 50 kilos and like for someone of my height, guys, I'm a giant, aren't I Alex? Yeah, Yeah, she's huge, (laughs) right? So like, so like going on the Marinsky (laughs) stage, super thin, I felt sort of like outside of my body. I didn't have the power I didn't have the resources, literally, Mm -hmm. in my body to pull upon, to sort of deliver Mm -hmm. so much strength. Because when you factor in adrenaline, nerves, you lose energy anyway from that. If I do that, I'm nervous, right? And then I go on stage and I have no resources of muscle, like real power. Yeah, nothing underneath you. Nothing underneath, it's It's just just... in you. (laughs) Then it's like, you know, you will fail. Yeah. And I I felt super weak. And it was basically after that performance for me that I was just like, right, that's it. Mm. No one's going to tell me to look a certain way. I'm literally going to feel myself and feel strong like an athlete. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you want to be a professional dancer. You want to be a good one. Mm -hmm. And being super thin is only going to hold you back. Mm -hmm. I think like as well, this is sort of transitioning into going for auditions and going for companies. Mm. Research the company before you go. See what the general consensus is in that company. If the dancer, most of the majority of the dancers are very tall and very thin. For me, I wouldn't go for that company. Just because I am on the smaller side. Mm. I am... Alex is like the opposite to me. Yeah. (laughs) Alex is much smaller than me. So, you know, Alex would go for a company that, like, I wouldn't go for. Yeah. Just like she wouldn't go for one that I went to. Yeah. And don't try and push yourself to be that person. You just need to accept, like, no, that company is not for me and I'm better off dancing here. Because you don't need to go through that stress, honestly. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, like, for example, if you're also, like, attached to a school that's attached to a company Mm. that are, like, super tall or super small, but you feel like it's expected of you to want to go to that company, like, don't be afraid to think outside the box Mm -hmm. and think outside your little bubble. You know, you've got to go where you would be suited, you would be appreciated you would be nurtured and at the end of the day used to dance for the company otherwise you'll end up just being unhappy yes and you don't want that (laughs) yeah and above all we must fuel ourselves so we can at the end of the day deliver and even after the rehearsals if I was on my way home and hungry I would snack Mm -hmm. I think that's another thing like listen to your body don't just respond to what the time is Mm -hmm. So if you say to yourself, no, I only have dinner at six. I don't have a snack between four and six. Listen, if you're hungry, for goodness sake, have a snack. Mm. Your body's trying to tell you something. Your body's worked extra hard. Otherwise, if you don't listen to it, you'll, it'll lead to injury and therefore time out. And therefore you'll be left behind and have to catch up later. Yeah, your body's different every day. And especially if this is for the women, mm. your body changes so much throughout that month. The time of the month, you mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. For sure. So we know through uh, certain periods of our cycle that we need to eat more. You almost sometimes need to eat double the amount of calories that you normally eat, which is quite substantial. That might be an extra meal for some of you. Yeah. And that's not your body trying to put weight on you. That's your body trying to literally produce enough energy to (laughs) release the egg. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, it's hard work, girls. It's hard work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Spatty. <laughs> yeah, carry on. We could make a whole another video about that, but um, we should. Yeah, we should. Another yeah. time. Yeah. So, guys, comment down below. We'll leave it there. Yes. yes we'll leave comment it. down below your favorite snack. We should say our favorite snack, though. Oh, okay. What's your favorite snack? So, I used to make these little energy balls that had dates. It had oats and pure vanilla. In Germany, I could buy vanilla that was in a grinder. So I used to oh, grind in this vanilla. Professional. I know. I'm sorry, I'm getting really bougie now. Um, she and is bougie. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would whip it up and make little energy balls. And they were like vanilla little sweet yum. cocktails. Oh, so good. So good. So yum. My favourite things were at the time, they were literally just cereal bars and it was just like, they were on the sweet side, so it was like oats, uh, maple syrup, a bit of raisin in there. Love that. Oh, they had almond butter in them as well. That yeah. was like my favourite thing. As well as I just love any kind of yoghurt. Yoghurt's honest. also a good one. Yeah. I do love a yoghurt. Because that is a carbohydrate as well, um, the natural sugars um, in milk. And protein. Yeah, and protein. <gasps> mm. That's a good one. Yeah. And sometimes I put a little bit of coconut yoghurt in my Greek yogurt, so it gave this creamy Yum. coconut flavor. <gasps> Yum! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening and watching. Please comment down below your favorite snack. Yeah, I want to know. Why you have it, and do you feel like it fuels you for your rehearsals? And thanks for joining us today. Thank you. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye for now.